This is our game, Castle Crusaders. It's a top-down fantasy game that we implemented using ECS and C++ with the SML library. First, we will look at our main menu scene, which holds all of the menu functionality. This includes starting a new game, continuing from our save progress, changing game options, and using the level editor. All of these options can be selected by left-clicking on the text. We have also included parallax in the background of our main menu. Our game also has different songs for different scenes. We have unique songs for our main menu, overworld, the actual gameplay scene, and the end credit scene. We also have unique sound effects for different actions such as attacking, being hit, and dying amongst other things. Our options menu is accessed from the main menu. You can left click to change any of the settings including difficulty, music volume, sound effect volume, and you can rebind keys. To rebind keys, left click on which actions you want to rebind, and then select the key you would like to replace it with. Our overworld is accessed from the main menu by selecting either new game or continue. New game will clear any progress the player has, whereas continue will pick up where the player left off. You can traverse the overworld using the A or D key and enter a level using the spacebar. Our overworld uses the fixed room camera effect. You can also use the escape key to exit. The main game scene is loaded when you enter a level. The controls are as follows. WASD for movement, spacebar to attack, Q and E to cycle through the different attacks or weapons available to the player, and P or escape to load the pause menu. Our main game scene uses the follow player camera mode and it implements all the physics and game mechanics for the main gameplay. Players and enemies have a health component which goes down when they are attacked, as seen, and when an enemy's health reaches zero, it dies and a shader is used to create the death effect. When the player dies, the death animation is played and the level will restart. Our game uses rectangular bounding boxes to detect all collisions. For our weapon system, we have a melee attack with a sword, a ranged attack with a bow, as well as magic attacks, a whirlwind attack, which knocks enemies back, and a fireball attack. Magic attacks use a mana cost with every use. To switch between these attacks, you can use the Q and E key by default. To demonstrate the save functionality of our game, we'll start a new game. When we enter the level, we'll start at the beginning. We can pick up some items, battle an enemy, now when we enter the pause menu with the P or escape key by default and save the game, now when we return to the overworld, we go back into the game and we pick up where we left off. We still have the same amount of inventory we had before. If we quit the game, we can also click continue and enter the level to pick up where we left off. However, if we quit the game and start a new game and enter the level, the level's reset and our save file has been overwritten. Our game's inventory can be accessed inside the pause menu by clicking either the P key or escape key by default. Inside you can see how many health potions and mana potions you have in your inventory and you can left click on them to use them. They each fully restore their respective bars. You can walk over mana potions and health potions to pick them up and they will be inside your inventory waiting to be used. Next up is power-ups. The archer's cap power-up allows the player to shoot three arrows at a time instead of one. This greatly increases the power of the bow. This effect lasts until the icon above the player's head disappears. The magic book icon gives the player the unlimited mana status effect. This allows the player to cast spells without paying the mana cost. The icon above the player's head disappears once the status is ended. The green
green potion item gives the player a temporary speed boost until the icon above their heads has run out. This allows the player to quickly get past enemies. For the gravity and acceleration portion of our game, we included an enemy that drops a gravity well on death. This attracts the player towards the well and damages them on impact. Next we will demo the different NPCs in the game. We see we have a ghost here which damages the player on collision with its given damage component. A gravity ghoul which drops a gravity well on death which sucks enemies and players in and damages them. The skeleton which like the ghost damages the player on collision. Lastly we have our boss NPC. On our way to the boss we will see the moving tiles we have added to our game. Once the boss sees the player using ray casting, the bridge behind us will disappear so the player is stuck and has to face the boss. The boss has a knockback attack which pushes the player back, which adds more to the fight than just basic collision damage. Next, we will look at our end credit scene by loading a save copy of level 3. When we defeat the boss, he'll drop a crystal. When we collide with it, it'll load the end credit scene. This scene contains attributions for all of our assets, the majority of which we got from itch.io and opengameart.org. Next, we will showcase level progression and the full level walkthrough. As we can see in the overworld, the next two levels are locked. This will change once we complete the first level. After completing the level, we are now able to go back and forth between the two and start at level two. If we go back out to the main menu and click continue, we see this progression stays unlocked. Our level editor allows us to load a custom save level, a new custom level, or use any of the worlds in the game as a template, as seen. If we go back, we can load a new custom level, if we select the first set of tiles, they have the custom default of block vision and block movement as true, whereas the second set has them as false. We can scroll after selecting a tile to change the texture we want to place down. We can left click 
and drag the mouse to place tiles down. If we then select the mouse pointer, we can select the tiles to individually change their properties. If we select the enemies, we can scroll to change which NPC we want to place down. We can also select these enemies to change their block movement value, block vision, starting HP, which we increase by left clicking and decrease by right clicking, their damage, and their follow speed. The spawner component allows us to change the properties that spawn enemies spawn in with. This includes the enemy damage, their health, their speed, and the rate at which they spawn. We have an eraser option that allows us to left click and drag to erase anything currently placed in the level. We can save the current custom level with this save option and play it using the play option. If we place the player down, we can set a few tiles around. And these will have the block movement option set by default. If we hit play, we can load the level, and we're stuck inside. If we go back to the editor, we can erase these tiles. If we place a tile and select it, we can change the type to a movement type. This allows us to change the patrol speed and set points we want the block to patrol. Left click to lay down more points and right click once you're finished. If we save now and enter the level, we have a moving tile which pushes the player. We can go back again to the editor, select the tile once more and change block movement to false. If we save and load the level now, we can actually stand and ride on the tile as it moves. We were unable to properly implement the lighting effect within our actual game levels as it was causing too much lag and it had a couple bugs we had to work out. However, we can demonstrate what we have accomplished with it within the custom loaded level. For pathfinding and steering, we were unable to implement pathfinding correctly, but we were able to implement steering. By pressing C, we can see the steering vector on the enemy, and the enemy will head towards the player through line of sight. However, when line of sight is broken, the enemy will head towards the last seen location of the player. This tracking behavior was implemented after a lot of the video was recorded, so the movement behavior of the enemies might differ in different parts of the video. Now we will showcase some of our extra features that we implemented in the game. One of these features is our very comprehensive level editor, as previously explained, which allows you to change all the properties of any tile or enemy within the game itself. We also have implemented a spawner system, which allows enemies not only to be placed in certain locations, but to spawn randomly throughout the map as long as they have a sightline with the player. We can also change the enemy's damage component, health component, speed component, and the rate at which they spawn 